Welcome back, and we are getting ready for round 23 of the championship. Don't forget, you can get in touch with us on Twitter. Let's have your thoughts on the racing so far in the upcoming race on at ITV Motorsport. It would be great to hear from you. There is the pole position man, Colin Turkington, with all the work to do. I think when we get onto the green flag lap, we're going to have a word with Jake Hill, who lines up in P3. They are just about underway now, so let's see if we can get in car and have a nice early chat with Jake Hill. So, Richard in the commentary box to Jake. Hope you're OK. Jake, what are you looking for in this race? Thoughts on the ballast and the, the job in hand? Hi, Richard. Yeah, really looking forward to this one. Um, yeah, a little bit more weight than we had than we had in uh, race club, but still, looking forward to it. I've got Tom and Colin in front of me, and yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a, a good race. Prediction for finish? Sorry, say again, Richard. I was just going to ask you, what's your prediction uh, for a finish before I hand over to Tim? Um, I reckon if we can stay in the top five, I'll be pretty happy with that. So that's going to be my aim. So of course, if we can grab another podium, that would be brilliant. Jake, Tim here. Quick question. You'd be pleased to know that Jason Plato came to your defence over that incident with Tom Ingram, saying that uh, you were in the right and Tom moved over on you. But uh, given that circumstance again, would you have given the, the place back or do you regret that now? Yeah, I regret it a bit, to be honest, Tim. I should have dealt with it in the, in the bus afterwards. Um, but nevertheless, I know that now, and thanks to Jason for having my back, mate. That's uh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to give it a good go. No holds barred and send it. Well, we appreciate your honesty, mate. Good luck in this one. Cheers, guys. Good luck to Jake Hill. We can have a look at how they, how they start here with joint championship leader. Colin Turkington on pole position. It's the Toyota alongside Tom Ingram will be taking the battle back to him once again. Jake Hill, the man we just heard from in third from Rory Butcher. On the third row, Ash Sutton, joint championship leader, and Dan Kamish hungry for some more success from there. Seventh on the grid is Adam Morgan, and then we've got Josh Cook. Senna Proctor lines up on row five, and completing the ballasted entries, Michael Crease. Then it's Chris Smiley and Stephen Jelly. Seventh row, Matt Neal and Tom Oliphant in the second BMW. Carl Bordley is next up. I think one of the fastest chargers in race one. Tom Chilton is alongside him. Then Sam Osborne and Jack Goff. Paul Rivette on row 10 with Jack Vutel. And then it's Ollie Jackson and Jessica Hawkins. Of course, the returnees and newcomers losing ballast for this race. Nick Hamilton on row 12 with Ethan Hamilton. And then it's Glyn Geddy and Andy Neat on row 13. The grid completed by Aidan Moffat. So let's just take a look, a reminder of who's got what in terms of ballast. It goes from the first 10 in race number one. Colin Turkington therefore carrying the most at 60 kg. Tom Ingram with 54, Jake Hill with 48, as he just discussed. Going down to Michael Kreese with 6 kg. And Michael, I guess, will be Happy to be in that scenario, team where he picks up a bit of ballast. It's a good thing. Yeah, it's always good. And he had a good race, actually, up from 17th, I think. So that's good. And we'll have to keep our eye open, of course, for Jess Hawkins, Ethan Hamilton, Glyn Geddy and Paul Rivette, all now without any ballast for this race. And the track temperatures come up to a whopping 10 degrees. No way. The sun's out, it's dry. <laughs> well, they won't know what's hit them. They'll get a veritable suntan. We're just off the back of the mid-season break and we've got four more rounds to go. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> Uh, so there is Ash Sutton. He, he was uh, a little bit cagey in his interview, actually, wasn't he? And so, you know, Matt, he's, he's quite bullish, but I think being realistic about his chances in this race. Yeah, but you know, if he feels that car's underneath him on lap one, we'll He'll see. Away. We'll see Ash Sutton come out as we know him. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all got our fingers crossed uh, for that. And you can again see the, the concentration worked out. Who's got around him? What he's got to do? He's he's got. To, Better amount of work to do. That's Paul Rivette. So this is really for the, for the guys coming back into the championship and the newcomers where they get their first ballast-free look and, and a proper evaluation of what they can do. Yeah, because the car was carrying ballast in, in, in free practice, qualifying and the first race. So now they really get to feel it unleashed. It would be fantastic to see one of those guys make it up into the points. And uh, well, we just basically, as ever in Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship Racing, got to have eyes absolutely everywhere to catch everything that goes on. Here we are on board with Matt Neal. Matt starting 13th on the grid. And uh, 
he will have Chris Smiley immediately ahead of him. But it's Colin Turkington and Tom Ingram on the front row once again. We had a note saying Jelly Pit Lane earlier on, which is near where I used to live, funny enough, but it meant that Stephen Jelly was in the pit lane. He's, he's coming out now onto track, but uh, starting off the back, so work to do. Yeah, Moffat and Jelly at the back. Moffat, we saw, had a problem in race one. That was a legacy of his uh, first corner accident with uh, Ollie Jackson. And uh, here we go for race two. Round 24, about to get underway. Lights are on. Off they go. Colin Turkey to the way. Rory Butcher this time. The toe fancy back to his start last time out. That's a cracker. So Butcher making progress. No. Yeah. Uh, Turkington, we know from race one it takes him a lap and a half to really get up. He's just defending for all he's worth and perhaps into the uh, complex at the end. The uh, uh, the Brundle Nelson chicane is the last opportunity. After that, he'll have his tyres up to temperature. Let's see if he can hold on to it. It's a wide, confident line. He doesn't really seem under threat from the language of the car coming into Brundle, and he holds on to it, and you can see Ingram still under pressure from Butcher. Next up is Ash Sutton up in the mix as well, so Sutton making progress. Let's see whether he can pile the pressure on as well. Yeah, early part of this race uh, shows that Sutton's got intense, doesn't he? He's yeah. got intention. He, he can see his championship rival leading the race, and he doesn't want to lose any more points to him. On board with Butcher, this is the third place car. Tom Ingram right in front of us here. Ingram trying to chuck up down. Colin Turkey to the lead position. Butcher, great start this time around. Let's see if he can do it. Now we've got a yellow flag out somewhere. Now, why is that? Who went off? Somebody off at turn one, I should think, from the first lap. That's a shame, because Ingram had an absolutely mega exit from uh, Murray's. He was inch perfect through the corner, and he felt the need to defend into Riches, which is a shame, because he's lost distance to uh, uh, Turkington. And look, Butcher looking around the outside. Oh. That's open the door for Sutton on the inside. Yeah, Sutton doesn't need a second invitation to come up, and he's having a good go. Here we go, Butcher on the outside line, coming down to Palmer. Sutton will hang it out. No, he won't. We'll go back in and maybe go for the run on the inside down into Agostini, if he can do that, if he can get the run, but the motor base car goes across, grabs the line on the inside, and it's Turkington still leading, Ingram second, Butcher in third place, but now Kamish is coming up to join in. Yeah, this is a great battle, this is what we like to see in race two, where the heavier cars have everyone up behind them, progressively lighter cars behind them, and Turkington's not running away at the moment. No, he's not having it all his own way, so the, the ballast doing its job to even things out and give us some great racing. Kamish looking a bit sharper here. And we've got this classic battle really now with Kamish and Ash Sutton together there. Jake Hill in, in behind trying to hold on. Look at the reaction from Sutton here. Oh. <laughs> he's saying don't defend. He's saying get on with the staying behind the cars in front. What he actually means is, please don't block me, and then I'll dive up and overtake you. <laughs> yeah, lots of different interpretations for that, but we'll, we'll see how it pans out at the moment. They are as they were. Carl Bartley, uh, Carl Bartley goes through shot. Then we've got Sam Osborne, Tom Chilton trying to make up a little bit of ground as well. And Jack Vitale, one of the drivers who, who did really well in terms of places gained in race one. Six places gained for him, I think Bartley did as well. Uh, and seven, you mentioned, for Michael Cree. So good to see Jack Vettel get finding his feet in the championship. Yeah, very much so. He's, uh, you know, the car Mercedes is a good car this year. And Jack's learning, uh, learning his craft. Sam Osborne gets a bit of a slide on coming through the corner, a little bit wide. Rear tyres perhaps just a trifle cold, or he's got the car set up a little bit loose. Tom Chilton got a verbal warning, actually, after race one oh, for well. his contact with Stephen Jelly. OK, so uh, he'll take that on board and uh, then just get on with the job in hand, which is what he'll do. You mean he'll ignore it? Is yeah, that what exactly, taking yeah. on board? <laughs> <laughs> he'll ignore that. In one ear, out the other. Wall, man. <laughs> Forget it. Didn't happen. Yeah, my teenager's like that. <laughs> he'll be watching this as well. I'll get, get that in the deck when I get home. Sutton, though, carrying on and still trying. Let's go back on board with Butcher. Third place here, charging down into Agostini. If he was going to make a dive, he'd be left of shot, looking down the inside line of Ingram, but he can't. Now, at the moment, Tuckington, point five, the second at the end of that last lap. Not really developing, he's got the extra ballast onto this race, so not getting away as quickly as in race one. No, and Kamish, the fastest lap on the last lap, and he's in uh, fifth place, so there he is. He's getting a, a nice little toe off the cars in front. He's a little bit lighter, but there's nothing in. This is a great on-board shot, and I love... Look at the precision of uh, Ingram, how close he is to the tyres. When he gets to the, the curbs, how close he is to the, the, the raised part of the curb. It's great viewing. 
superbly set up race this with more ballast for the race winner and the others just swapping places and Kamish looking handy there and actually starting to put Sutton under a little bit of pressure there is Michael Kreese chasing, uh, chasing Jackson at the moment so Michael with his with his ballast on I can't recall if he's had ballast before he probably has yeah yeah but the track looking nice and uh, nice and dry everywhere so no damp patches or anything now it's uh, perfectly raceable they can use the whole width of the road Sutton just taking a little breather didn't he on that last lap yeah he, 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 whether that signal to for him to uh, butcher to put the pressure on Ingram it appears to have worked actually because uh, um, butcher is a bit closer yeah by not driving right at him it just sort of sends a message that he, he, he should be clear to have a little go uh, Tom Ingram, who is out front, the butcher starting to have a look there. He's just coming offline, back on board with the race leader again. That superb concentration, butcher though, right with Ingram as you say. Now that did seem to work for some. Hamish right up with him as well. Then it's Jake Hill, Adam Morgan seven. Morgan's got the fastest lap. Oh, that's not a place to pass through that little kink there. But he tries, maybe just trying to upset Ingram. Yeah, they come down towards Agostini again, might be a, a dive down the inside if they can get the momentum and close enough down on the braking. On board with that Sutton, no room for him there, but she's still working hard to try and nibble away at that second place. Tom Ingram, Tom runs out slightly wider there as they head down this short straight on the infield section into Hamilton. It's one of those barriers that they like clouting and just giving it a little move there. Yeah, it was actually Hamilton I thought they were going through before, but it was Palmer's, wasn't it? But uh, So there was, definitely wasn't a gap there. But this is getting interesting now. And, uh, and, and again, Turkiton hasn't got away yet. No, he hasn't. He's certainly got that different complexion, the ballasting working out superbly, not for Colin. He, he'll be happy enough to be out front. And of course, we know that he's got the experience and, and the skill and the nature to hold on to this win. And Tom Ingram is the man really have to say under pressure at the moment. The third place car is closer to second than second is to first. But what he also knows is that they won't get really any tyre degradation here. There's, there's very little tyre degradation, if at all. So uh, it'll be no problem. Here we go on board with Butcher again. Just watch to see the brake lights come on. His left foot braking, a little touch to turn the nose in there. And then gradually on the brakes there, but not too hard or you'll lock up. Well, look how, look at that perfect, inch perfect line through uh, through the corner there at, at, at um, Murray's to get a perfect exit onto the start line. Superb view, let's see whether Adam Morgan is going to hold on to his fastest lap at the moment, 157.725. There he is in the 33 Mercedes coming towards us. Down behind him, it's Josh Cook at the moment in the Honda. So uh, did he? Nobody, nobody usurped that on the on that last lap. So Morgan holds on to that at the moment, and uh, that's a point that some of the other drivers at the moment don't have to worry about. Yeah, it's an absolute freight train at the it front. Is. You've actually got three and a half seconds covering the top eight cars on the track. Yeah, this is superb stuff. Ingram dropping away, and Turkey did starting to lose him. The gap on the last lap was 0.76 of a second. Oh. Aidan Moffat, such a shame after qualifying. Yeah, Big shame that for is him. a shame. As I said, he had that. Uh, he was all oh, butchers into the tail of Ingram. This all allows Turkington to inch away, inch away, and for every meter or two that he stretches out, that's an extra bit of track position that they've got to catch up later. It is, and uh, they're very nearly, of course, at half distance at the moment. So Sutton starting to think about maybe having a go at Butcher again. There's a gap between Butcher and Tingram. Jake Hill's still in sixth place, so I guess he's going to be too disappointed with that at the moment. This is the moment. This is... Uh, Butcher into the back. It's, oh, he actually, he really, really got into the back there. But that was that wasn't deliberate. He just was breaking too late. That's a good place to to try and make the pass. But they they all come out of that unscathed. That's touring car racing, isn't it? Yeah, he didn't unsettle Ingram. It didn't snap him into a half spin or anything. He was just literally breaking a little bit too late. Butcher in the focus, focused very much on Tom Ingram in second place. But now, as you can see. The gap may be getting bigger between first and second and second and third, but third and fourth is closing up and Ash Sutton is starting to go back on a little bit of a mission. We're on board with him and challenging. Go forward, go forward, Same come signal. on. Same yeah. signal, isn't it? He wants him to do the attacking, really. Um, he doesn't want to compromise and he's saying, don't defend or we'll just slow each other up, but please attack and give me an opportunity perhaps to get through. 
Tim, you've been in that scenario. When you see another driver gesticulating, do you actually see it in your mirrors? or? Well, you don't know whether to trust him because the, the moment you then don't defend, he'll go and nip up the inside of you. And you think, well, you told me not to, to get <laughs> on. Uh, you know, I love the mental psychology, but Every basically the, the, the rule is don't trust anyone. Every man for himself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so Butcher is still there. Tom Ingram, I think, is being closed on again. The gap went out to 9 tenths, so Turkington again has chipped away. Still Morgan with the fastest lap. One second first to second. Ingram to Butcher is three tenths. And then Camish not far away as well. Jake Hill's got Adam Morgan right behind him as well. Morgan from Cook, then Proctor. On board, on board now with Matt Neal. Matt Neal down in 14th place and uh, he's got no weight on so you know he should be able to make progress again here but he's up behind another uh, identical FKA Honda the BTC racing car of uh, Michael Kreese. Uh, Kreese is still the leading Jack Sears championship driver for, for those who have not had a, an overall podium. Uh, Bordley second in the Jack Sears trophy at the moment and Sam Osborne running third. Out of the newcomers, Jessica Hawkins ahead of Paul Rivette at the moment. I think Paul might have had a moment on the first lap, looking back further further down the order. Yeah, fair play to Jessica. She's in 24th place, but ahead of, uh, of Paul Rivette. Uh, Ethan Hamilton's in 22nd, and uh, Geddy's in 21st. Yeah, all together, the, the returnees and newcomers. Yeah. It was good to see. Well, well something very yeah. close now, I'm isn't he? That. <laughs> get that logo any closer to that camera if you want to do that will please the sponsors and it will please the fans because it means that we've got a battle underway here Turkington across the line again the gap's out to over a second now Turkington Ingram Butcher Sutton Camish Hill Cook Morgan next up Adam Morgan fastest lap now with Colin Turkington lap six 157 669 the race leader extra point available for him yeah, well, that just shows you the BMW's getting more temperature in its tyres. It takes a long time, doesn't it, in these conditions? And Turkington now the fastest man track. In fairness, Ingram set his fastest lap on the last lap as well, only a couple of tenths slower. So all gunning for it at the front. The, the positions are staying the same, but it's a game of cat and mouse between all of them. Butcher trying to close in. That nil collision, we're being told. Oh, well, actually, well, it was, uh, it was Kreese hitting Oliphant, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Matt Neal was just behind. Gave us the view, though, and he's going to go through on the inside of Michael Kreese. Here. Kreese started in 10th place. That puts him down to 14th with that ballast on board. But Turkington, maximum ballast, fastest lap, that lead point. And, uh, and yeah. leading this race, this is looking very good for Colin. Yeah, and uh, Sutton will get him frustrated. Kamish will be frustrated. But there's nothing they can do. He's just getting ahead. Superb stuff from the multi-champion, the defending champion, Tom Ingram still in the mix as well and scoring valuable championship points but won't want to be losing ground points-wise on the likes of Colin Turkington. So important that he stays ahead here of Ash Sutton for his uh, championship to stay on course. So too for Dan Kamish. Kamish needs to get up there as well. Still a, a hat load of points to be had at Brands Hatch and we've got race three where people can make progress as well. Well, exactly, and that's what they'll be hoping. They'll be hoping if Colin pulls off this win that he has a problem in race three and that'll change everything. But at the moment, Colin's having a very good day. That was a slightly strange line that uh, Ingram took. I don't know if he's trying to break the toe or anything, but he don't normally do that. But uh, he moved, certainly moved to the left uh, very early on. I love that onboard shot we have from Butcher when we go through Corum and you just see Ingram tap the brakes to turn the front, get the nose in, put some weight on the front. It's a great shot here. It's fa fantastic to see. This is the slowest corner on the track and again Butcher gets up close and personal and tries to dislodge Ingram but of course Ingram would have had him right in his mirrors from pretty much the get-go. I have to say, Speedworks have done a fantastic job with that Toyota. You know, it's been absolutely there all year and uh, has scored wins and podiums uh, ever since Knock Hill, the third round of the championship. He's scored at least a podium or a win every round. Yeah, three wins, three second places, one third place, and uh, maybe on his way for another one to add to that. But it's very much a cue, isn't it? Was it the freight train you called it, Tim? That is absolutely spot on. They're all still there. Sutton's still trying to close in on Butcher. 
One mistake could just change absolutely everything. But they're all lined to turn at the moment. With Turkington away down the road, they've got no answer to him in this one. No, yeah, someone's clipped those tyres, haven't they? Just on that, uh, on the inside of Hamilton's. Uh, Morgan had a, a track limits warning earlier as well, so he's had his warning. But uh, other than that. Uh, no offences, and the gap has now gone out to just under two seconds at the front. Turkey to 1.8 seconds away from uh, Ingram. Yeah, superb stuff from him, and this has been fascinating so far for second position into the last third of the second race of the weekend. Butcher still there, unable to dislodge Ingram. Ash Sutton would probably fancy his chances for a go. I'm wondering if Sutton would have maybe fancied his chances of a, a podium earlier on, but uh, didn't sound that com confident about the car as they come out of Murray's again on the straight. It's going to have to be a mistake or maybe a forceful move, a very, very late braking to have a go, but just loses out a wee bit here as they go down the straight. Yeah, there's also a little bit of an element of here of no nobody wanting to um, blow a good result, yeah. um, you know, for a, a, a few extra points. They'll take the opportunity if it comes, but nobody's really forcing the issue. And is that a different approach to oh, a little bit of contact there again? Sutton getting. I was going to say no, normally this race meeting at Snet is is at the sort of halfway point or just after, and you might take more risks at that time of year rather than the penultimate round. Yeah, I think there's an element of that. They can see that Turkington's going to bag maximum points. The last thing they want to do is make that gap even bigger by by committing a mistake. And you know what happens when we normally say that sort of thing? Someone will go for a move. Yes, exactly. We get to the last third of the race, and they're fed up with following each other, so they try something. Uh, Ash Sutton at the moment seems to have his championship hat on, if, if that is the case. And uh, So there goes Adam Morgan, erstwhile fastest man of the uh, race. Ollie Jackson goes through, Chris Smiley and Tom Oliphant, again, uh, working hard after that, uh, being dumped down the order at the start of race one. Prop to 12, Matt Neal. He's next up, so centre prop to the target for McNeil, trying to close in on six, possibly six foot six centre prop to now, I should imagine. Yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. But just all over the back, isn't he? Just can't. There doesn't seem to be. The cars are both very similar cars, aren't they? They're both uh, hatchback cars. The, the new Focus ST this year from Motorbase, uh, lower centre of gravity than the old car. It's been a, a really quick car from the get go. But it is its first year, and uh, you know, the Toyota's in its second year. Having said that, the Infinity actually was a brand new build car this year as well. Yeah, great to see these new shapes and cars coming in and adding spice to the championship. You only had to look at the original grid to see the variety that we have at the front of this. Ingram again taking that wide line, as you say, possibly to try and break the toe, but still there in P2. On but, to... but six different cars in the top six places. It's fantastic, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, who needs one mate racing? <laughs> we do for the supports, though. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, Ingram under pressure again. Butcher taking a wide line here. This might afford him a bit more momentum, but again, a little tap on the back end of Ingram. Well, it's tap, 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 isn't it? Because yeah. Ingram's going tight in all the places he needs to defend. Um, late turn in there, but gets a good exit as a result of that. And then he'll go a little bit defensive again into uh, the Agostini hairpin. Sutton breaking ranks there, just showing his colours down the inside to Agostini. Nothing doing, but just letting Rory Butcher know that he's there. Dan Camish playing a watching game and waiting game as well. And Jake Hill still with them. Yeah, I mean, they, they've just been following Molina all the way through this race. There's two and a half laps to go at the moment. Um, so, will anything... I can't see a spot where any particular car or driver is quicker than the guy in front. I can't see right. where the, the, the move might come. So you tend to be waiting for mistakes, and none of these drivers really are of the calibre where they're going to make regular mistakes, for sure, and uh, this is a car problem or an unsettling problem or something like that. You mentioned the tyres are lasting, so that's not going to happen. We've got what we've got. Yeah, we've got what we've got, but usually there's sort of... Uh, some cars are stronger in, other, in some areas of the track yeah. than others, but uh, we're not seeing it at the moment. Chris, yeah, Chris Smiley is uh, the man defending at the moment from Tolo Oliphant. Let's see what he can do. So the 22 car will hold on. Matt Neal right there as well. Oliphant with, that, Oliphant with a ding in the door. That was uh, Michael Priest a bit earlier, which uh, let Matt Neal through. That is a, a dent and a crease in the door, isn't it? Literally? Yeah. <laughs> so here oh. we go with 
Oh, oh board with Matt Neal. Look at the amount. Of, oh, he's, that's not no, no. That's a late, late, late oh. lunge. Oh, how did he get out of that and avoid contact? It's such a difficult place to pass that. In the car, you think it must be on because you're only sort of lightly breaking. So you just think, if I ease off a bit, the guy in front must, I must get through, but you can't. Ah, what's happening now? Kamish is, Kamish is, is, is nudging the back of uh, Sutton. Yeah, Kamish looking to want to have a little bit of a play now, so giving Sutton a little bit of a, a moment to let him know that he is there. Jake Hill coming up into the mix as well. Josh Cook, is Josh Cook going to tag himself on the back of this group as well? Off goes Jack Goff. Oh, where's he gone off? He's hit the barrier somewhere. He has, looks like heavy damage on that. So, oh, moment on the dirt. Back. Oh, nasty hit. That is a nasty hit. Got a wheel on the wet to grass and it turned him across the road all the way into the barrier. Safety and car has been scrambled. Yeah, Colin Turkington's 3.6 second lead is going to come to naught now. It is, but we've only got one lap to go. But Yeah, that's true. But they'll be under the safety car, so we'll see what happens. There is Hopefully Jack Goff's OK, that's my first concern. Absolutely right, yeah. We were hoping to chat, chat to Jack in race three, but it's going to be a lot of... A lot of repairs, isn't it? Might be from the pit lane. Could well be. <laughs> Could well be. Yeah, let's hope it's Scott Stringfellow waiting for the pack to uh, come up the start-finish line. They've already stopped racing. Look, they've seen the safety car boards and they've stopped racing. 3.6 second lead down the Swanee, though, for Colin Turkington. Yeah. Not his fault, so he's done all the hard work. Got the fastest lap as well, though. Yeah, but he's OK. He's, uh, he knows that the uh, he's got the pace of these this field today. Who's been the big... Look at um, Ollie Jackson, up 12 places from his starting position. He's been the biggest mover in this uh, in this field. Yeah, good performance from Ollie, and he might be able to make more progress. He's got Adam Morgan in front of him at the moment in eighth place. Goff's car, I think, might take a little while to do. There is Rory Butcher, as you can see, the, the focus on all of these drivers, absolutely superb. Yeah, it's amazing how little a driver blinks when the adrenaline's running. Yeah. Very little. Butcher going through at the moment in third place, Ash Sutton in fourth, all taking a little bit of a breather. Yeah. Quite rightly so. How's the, the focus change on this? Is, is, is the driver going to spend the time actually now? We've, we were looking at Ash Sutton, looking at the, at the printed grid when he was waiting for the off and just work out what's happening. And again, this is a period where a driver will think about what's going to happen on the restart and who's going to do what. Yeah, uh, well, we're, that's if we get a restart. Um, we'll, we'll see, but... Uh, yeah, time's tight today as well, isn't it? Yeah, with exactly. The, with the hour going yeah, back. Yeah, it's showing final lap, so... That would be great for Colin Turkington, but they're still sort of keeping the tyre tempers up, just in case. We'll see whether race controller are preparing the chequered flag or, or not here. And, of course, if it does take a, an extra while to clear Jack Goff's car, then that would be a sensible decision by the officials and could give Colin Turkington not only is he tied on uh, points with Ashup, but also tied on race wins so far this year. No sign of the checker being deployed there, but still the safety car flag. And it'll take Colin on to five wins, outright championship lead, Ash Sutton will be four, so he'll be the driver with the most wins and the outright lead of the championship. Still got to do it, still got to get him there. And as Tim said, it may well be at the end of this safety car period. So a lot of graphics this final lap, we're just trying to get confirmation from race control for you as to what exactly the scenario is, because you do get extra laps on the safety car. Yeah, you car. can add up to five additional laps, can't you? So, uh, But we're just waiting for race control to confirm it. So in car with Colin, is still very focused, and race control still, I think, just sorting things out. Scott Stringfellow brings them around. So Tom Ingram in second position, Roy Butcher in third. And, uh, of course, the gap goes out, they find their own space, and space on track, a little bit of head space for all the drivers as well, just to think about what's gone before and also what is what is coming up, and they'll know that they're in towards the closing stages of, of the race. The graphics yeah. changed for 12, 12 and 13. Yeah, now. well, they can have up to five additional laps, but there was only one lap to go in the actual race time, yeah. but uh, they can have up to five additional laps behind the safety car to be added on to uh, the, the race distance. 
I think we're being told that uh, Jack is out of the car, which is good news. That's excellent news, yeah. Hopefully have a chat with him. There, there he is, Jack. standing up, all oak, probably winded. Um, but uh, that was a big shunt, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Not, not good to see. And, and I sort of teed, teed him up to have a chat with him before race three, based on the things we'd already mentioned here about him being very successful. He took his first BTCC win here. Well, he's um, going to thank you for that, isn't he? is, he? yeah, thanks, Richard. Yeah, that's the kiss of death, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, don't bother coming back, mate. <laughs> yeah, it never happens when David Addison speaks no, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always have a good race then. Uh, hey ho, got another bit of Jack Goff. He was uh, actually one of the drivers. I know they'll, they'll, they'll kill me if I don't say it, but started off in uh, MG Trophy, which uh, is a, a great little championship and uh, some, some very good drivers coming through that. They're having a difficult year. Well, the marshals have done an excellent job very they quickly have. to get that car onto the flatbed truck. They've worked very well to get that um, quickly moved, so there is a chance we can get back to racing fairly soon. Look, complete wheel assembly there, <laughs> trying to get that on. The only problem well, is it's a long way back to safety isn't it depending where they park it up because yeah. it's quite a long lap so. and I, I doubt we're going to be seeing that I mean I'm not going to I'm not going to say we won't because the team hard boys are fantastic but it's a fairly quick turnaround before yeah. race three but we'll we'll see what happens but uh, that could be Jack Goff's day done yeah big shame last year came from the back of the grid after a non-starting race two so race two is at Smet the last two years not proving happy hunting grounds for Jack Goff there's Jessica Hawkins coming towards us with Paul Rivette in the Trouble 2 car. And Jessica still top. Actually, Ethan Hamilton chasing Glyn Geddy, so Glyn is still the top of the returnees. Yeah, they're all together, aren't they? Look, yeah. All four of them, absolutely. Here's another look. Oh, look, out of Turn 1, which is a very high-speed corner, 100-plus miles an hour, drops a wheel on the on the wet grass and across the road it goes and you just can't scrub any speed off then lights have gone out on the safety car so we're going for a restart there'll be some frantic last minute tire warming and we'll see how turkington controls the start when will he go he'll leave enough of a gap but it's up to him when he lights the blue touch paper which is great to see, so it looks like it's going to be a one-lap dash. Look at his the... eyes! I know. His eyes are everywhere! He's looking in the <laughs> mirror trying to judge when he can jump them, when he can go. Look at this! Great! That's a great illustration, isn't it, of a, of a driver getting ready. He's gone, he's, he's gone. gone. Yeah, he, he saw it in the eyes just the moment he pegged it. Yeah. Superb restart. So oh, Tom, he's left them for dead. He has left them. Superb restart there. So... We think, at the moment, one lap to go, and it's Colin Turkington who nails the restart, comes out of Murray's corner. Ingram second, Butcher third, Sutton still fourth, Camish next up, as they were before the Jack Goff instigated safety car. Now we've got Fordley and Grease together, that's for the lead of the Jack Sears Trophy, so back and going on 14-15, but up front, Turkington and Ingram... And this is the final away. lap, this is. is the final lap, so it's a one-lap dash. Down to there. Oh, oh, contact on the back of Ingram by Butcher. Ingram comes back on the outside line. Ash Sutton's got off the inside as well. Well, this is what Ash Sutton was hoping for all the way through the race. Finally, Butcher's hit um, Ingram hard enough to give him an opportunity. That might be the, not be the last of that either for Butcher. May well be not. So here they come now. Ash Sutton has made it up onto a provisional podium. Turkington is away. Camish on the inside line as well. Camish challenging on the inside with Rory Butcher. Is he going to go through? He's got the line, just leans on him a little bit as they come out of Agostini and will complete the job going through Hamilton. They're side by side as they go through Ham Hamilton, but uh, Butcher stays on the track and will have the inside for Oggies. Incredible stuff on board with Butcher. And we can see now Ash Sutton starting to get away, down into Williams, then onto the Bentley straight. But Butcher holding on to it. Good yeah, racing Butcher's, between the pair. Butcher's car doesn't look 100%, it doesn't. does it? <laughs> so it, we had to wait the whole race for something to happen, and it happened on the one lap down. <laughs> Didn't expect that to happen, but these boys are all after their points, and they're all crucially still in decent point scoring positions. Ash Sutton now all over the back of Tom Ingram and looking for second place through Bob Hole. Down towards Coram for the last time. Can he do it? I, I'm not sure, but second would be a lot better than uh, third for the points. He wants every point he can get. 
20 to 15, the points scored in this race, turning to to Ash Sutton, piling the pressure on as they come up into Murray's. I don't think he's going to do it. He won't have to run to the flag. Ingram has sucked, sucked up all the pressure so far through the race. Here comes Turkington to bag the fifth win of the 2020 campaign. Turkington takes the checkered flag. Second place to Tommy. Delighted again is Colin Turkington. Very well measured race again from him. Super restart. Ingram second. Sutton third. Butcher fourth. Hill fifth. And Dan Kamish in sixth. Yeah, there was drama at the final corner with uh, between Butcher, Hill and Kamish. Butcher was sideways and Hill managed to jump Kamish in the run to the line. Well, so, older Honda beats new Honda into fifth place. There was a change of Michael Creese won the Jack Sears. Is the incident, I think we can see. Through Butcher turn three. one. And Butcher's not particularly close. That was, that was a big error of judgment there. Big error of judgment. Matt Neal on the last corner. Oh, oh, over that huge curb. Did he get a whack as well? It was such a big impact, wasn't there, as he went over the curb. Couldn't tell whether that was from behind. There they go across the line, Sutton in third place, and the front on the Colin Turkington celebration. Now, I was mentioning that Carl Bordley was up chasing Michael Kreese for the lead of the Jack Sears. That changed the round, because Bordley wound up 24, so something happened there on the last lap as well. Yeah. All Could happened on speak? one lap. <laughs> That's all you need, isn't it, a lot of the but time? But so far, a perfect, perfect day for uh, yeah. uh, for Colin Turkin. He'll be thinking now, I've just got to keep my nose clean in the reverse rear brace. I've got to yeah. keep my nose clean. I don't want all the good work to be ruined by a non-finish in race three. It happened last time at Croft with a little nudge on the first corner, broke a toe lick. He'll be desperate to make this day pay off with a good, good third race. It's going to be a fascinating, well, the grid draw we've got coming up, which I know yeah. you're going to be uh, watching. Here's the result, round 23 of the championship. Colin Turkington takes the win. Tom Ingram second from Ash Sutton. Rory Butcher clatters his way to fourth place from Jake Hill. Dan Cammy sixth from Josh Cook. Ollie Jackson in eighth. Adam Morgan ninth. And Chris Smiley completing the top ten. Tom Oliphant 11th with the close attentions of Matt Neal. Senna prop to 13th. Michael Kreese taking another win in the Jack Sears Trophy from Sam Osborne. Tom Chilton, 16th from Stephen Jelly. Glyn Geddy, the first of the returnees and newcomers in 18th from Ethan Hamilton and Jack Butel in 20th. 21st, Jess Hawkins from Andy Neat. Paul Rivet, 23rd. Then Carl Bordley dropping back on the last lap. We'll have to get the story there. Nick Hamilton, a lap adrift. And sadly, of course, problems as we saw for both Aidan Moffat and Jack Goff. Yeah, so basically wow. all we needed was a one-lap race to give us that all excitement. <laughs> <laughs> but, Qual uh, qualifying almost came down to that as well, didn't it, with yeah. the revised one run? And uh, But no, it was it was a, a fascinating race up to that point as well, but it, it, it kind of brought it to life, didn't it? So, it did, yeah, it did. Turkington's going to be very happy now, isn't he? Pole, two wins, and uh, he's just going to be eager, as we are, to see what happens for the reverse grid draw. So just check the rollers go underneath that we're all OK there because this is an absolutely crucial, but there isn't going to be a problem, we know that, but you never know. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with a word with Colin Turkington in just a few minutes.